Uh, so yes, I'm Rob Pirakowski. I've been an instructional designer for uh, 16 years now. Um, and before that, a classroom teacher. And I currently teach, um, I teach French online. I've been doing that for uh, about 10 years now. So I run a lot of discussions, run a lot of workshops, see a lot of friends uh, for whom I have run workshops. So uh, it's great. Um, so what I'm he uh, here to talk about, obviously, and what you're here to hear about is uh, how to monitor and evaluate discussions in an online course. Um, we've been talking about it for a very long time in SLN and in Open SUNY. Um, really what, um, you know, uh, when we train new faculty, a lot of times uh, discussion forums uh, at, when they, hear it, when they first hear a discussion, they think class participation, they think uh, sort of lightweight activity in an online course. Um, and it takes a while to get uh, instructors uh, tuned into the fact that discussions can carry a lot of weight in, uh, in an online class in learning. So uh, even that, when we say that for the first time, that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't really click right away for an instructor because um, discussion is usually uh, sort of falls into the category in a grade book of class participation usually worth about 10% of a student's grade. And so it takes a little bit of effort when training a new faculty member about how to place emphasis on online discussion that will uh, carry weight in the class, but more importantly, create learning inside the class. So what, um, <clears throat> you know, what I like to call it is, I like to call it student-to-student -student interactions. Because as we talk about um, discussion forums uh, with faculty all around the state, really discussion forums is um, really a, a convenient name for this feature in an online course. Um, it's great to have, because when you talk to a math faculty member or you talk to uh, faculty from all different disciplines, for some disciplines, discussion's gonna work great. For some, for some disciplines, the, the, uh, the thought of discussion not going to work so great. It, it's hard for faculty to imagine uh, any kind of worthwhile activities for students. However, if you frame it as student-to-student -student interactions and you talk about emulating real-life situations where uh, professionals in a field need to collaborate, then um, you start talking about fruitful collaborations that will be uh, evaluated and monitored. So uh, do they have to be discussions? Not necessarily. They can be case studies. They can be uh, usually an artifact is put in front of the students, and we ask them to interact around the artifact. So what we do in, on, in a lot of online classes, and I know a lot, of you, a lot of you already know this, but for those of you who don't, we try to set up some ground rules for that collaboration, for that gathering around any kind of artifact. Could be a reading, it could be a chapter in a textbook, it could be a piece of art, it could be a case study, it could be uh, a choice of different case studies, a choice of different artifacts. But uh, what we try to do in setting up those ground rules is uh, make sure that the students show evidence of critical thinking, show evidence of having done the reading, uh, so to speak, and show evidence of learning. And I have to say it takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time for students to grow accustomed to this. What I encourage faculty to do over and over again is um, think of these different features in an online course as really just devices. They're just devices to get students to learn. And what students really tune into is if you, don't, if you call it a discussion test, all of a sudden students will place a lot of emphasis. That's a test. That's not just a discussion. That's a test. And so what I, what I recommend, you know, since we're talking about the, uh, discussions, but we're talking about features too, is, you know, use the tests uh, for pretests 
getting students to, to, to do the readings. Because on tests in Blackboard, students can collaborate. Students can share information. We know that every test in Blackboard is open book and collaborative. So place less emphasis on the tests feature in Blackboard and perhaps more emphasis on something like the discussion forums. And if you can, characterize them in phrases that students have been conditioned to value. They value tests. They value quiz. They value project. Call the discussion a project and you'll get better participation sort of right off the bat because it creates a, a more powerful instinctual reaction from the student. This is what I call my, my aspirational slide of today's presentation. And uh, I chose it. It's from criticalthinking.org. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that website. But um, when we think about setting up those ground rules and when, when we think about what we want to be the product of a discussion forum. I like this graphic because it, uh, you know, it sort of blends, obviously, uh, critical thinking and creative thinking. But you know, some of these things we, we're going to see, if we have fruitful participation in, in uh, a forum, we're going to see divergent thinking. We're going to see a lot of these qualities in the discussion forum. And frankly, in an online course, it's very um, invigorating for the instructor to see um, fruitful uh, back and forth between students. Um, so uh, what, what I'll ask you to do, and this, this presentation is available to you, um, to you online uh, after this. I have a QR code at the end where you can get all the materials from uh, today. Um, is uh, you know, take a look at this. And, and if you do uh, help faculty uh, build rubrics for instruction, these are mostly behavioral outcomes. Uh, if you look uh, carefully at, at some, of the, uh, some of the words up there, um, I recommend you build them into the rubric okay, for, uh, for a discussion forum. So you want, you, in the rubric, part of uh, their grade is going to be on how well they identify uh, whatever uh, you're looking at. Uh, part, of their, uh, part of the rubric could be uh, for them to use their imaginations. Part of the rubric could be uh, how well they break something apart. Um, so I like this slide for that reason. Uh, you know, it, sh it shows a few sort of aspirational behavioral outcomes that could come out of a discussion. Really, in a discussion, what you want to do is you want the students to create knowledge, to somehow take them from, uh, from the chapter reading or from the artifact that you're asking them to look at and gather around and then apply some of these higher order thinking skills. So uh, again, my aspirational slide. Uh, just to give you a little background on the framework, I know a lot of you are familiar with the communi uh, community of inquiry model, but uh, this is the model uh, to which we subscribe uh, at SLN and now Open SUNY. Uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of these bullet points here, which are captured in the middle of this uh, diagram of social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence are present in discussions. You know, uh, <clears throat> again, when you're pitching a, pitching a discussion forum to students, you do want to communicate high expectations. Uh, it's very common for, for uh, an instructor to say, I don't want you to say I agree. I don't want you to, I don't want you to reword what, what's already in the text. So. Um, the time on task as well is, is very appropriate. A lot of times in a uh, discussion forum, it's, it's common and it's good practice to place uh, a very clear timeline for students in terms of participation. What we've recommended over the years is uh, something generic like uh, provide your initial response within three days of the start of the discussion, uh, respond to at least three students within seven days of uh, the start of the discussion, and by the end of this discussion, provide at least eight to 10 responses or something like that. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood that uh, a lot of what we sort of promote in regard to student-to-student -student interactions really comes from this uh, community of inqu inquiry framework. So uh, just some things around effective design in, in uh, discussions. Um, Open-ended questions. Okay, the initial question or the initial task 
that you have for, uh, for your students or you know, the students of your faculty uh, should, uh, should not have finite responses. If they do, uh, then the first three or four students will answer the question and the discussion will more or less be over. So, um, and uh, what I have here is, uh, you know, sort of a two-part uh, two design, uh, guidelines and instructions for their initial responses, and then separate from that, guidelines and instructions for how they are to interact with, with each other, what those expectations are. So those uh, <clears throat> Very, and, you know, in broad strokes, that's what it is. Uh, essentially, a two-part, two-part uh, uh, set of directions. Like, a, and here's an example from a course that I'm teaching uh, for uh, the Instructional Designer Certificate Program in Open SUNY. Um, sets up the question. Directions are they have to choose a quote and copy it, paste it into the main body, and they have to create questions. That's the initial task, and, and it's, uh, it's becoming a somewhat uh, popular design where you don't ask a student to answer a question. You give the student an, an artifact, and you ask the students to ask questions, or you task the students to ask questions to the group. So what you have is, in a class of 10 students, you now have 30 questions out to the group and lots of participation around those questions. The second, part, the second part would be to respond to at least three students or to respond, to respond to your classmates' initial posts in the following ways. So I, I will sort of dig into this, uh, the details of this a little bit. Add a question or two, provide an appropriate response, help your colleagues refine their responses. So um, again, an example of, uh, you know, the instructor setting up, hopefully, fruitful interactions between students. The target audience for this, uh, for this discussion forum is uh, instructional designers, so it's, it's quite appropriate. However, the level of detail in terms of the directions, um, I think, you know, could be could certainly serve as a model for, uh, for students. One of the things that students, uh, you know, are challenged by is discussion forums are relatively new to them. And they don't necessarily know how to behave in them. So what a lot of instructors have said over the years is that, yeah, what the, what the students wind up doing is jumping in two days before the end of the discussion and just plopping in, plopping in a lot of, you know, sort of, uh, let's call them second-rate responses. Um, and there's not much learning going on. So that timeline for, uh, for them to respond to questions in addition to the highly detailed what you're expecting from them um, really uh, helps them, uh, helps them uh, guides them in a very meaningful way. And you know, thirdly, uh, it's, in a, it's in a future slide, but just to sort of wrap that, wrap that up, in terms of evaluating them, it's important to evaluate them very quickly in the first discussions. So in other words, be right on top of them in terms of how they're performing in the discussions. This, again, is to help them understand the importance and the value of uh, the discussion forums, the value that you place on them in uh, the context of the course. So this is just another example uh, asking, uh, again, instructional designers to choose, uh, choose from, from a list what are effective strategies? They choose attrib attributes of a particular classroom. Um, and uh, just a couple of initial questions. And then again, uh, detailed instructions for the initial post, detailed instructions for, uh, for how they are to respond with their colleagues. Now, we're going to get into rubrics in, in a few minutes. And um, one thing that uh, I did in Angel when we were working in Angel, and uh, I intend to do it in this course as well, is actually taking my expectations, what I tell them to do in the, in the discussions, and actually copy-paste that into the criteria for the rubric. Because that, the alignment of, of, those, of, of that from the directions to the rubric makes it crystal clear. Because a lot of times what we do is 
uh, the rubric doesn't look anything like this. We, we grade them on uh, clarity, we grade them on timeliness, we grade them on uh, how original their ideas are, how often they've, uh, they've quoted from the text, those kinds of things. Uh, what I do recommend is w when you take a look at the directions for students and if, if, uh, or you know, in your uh, faculty's courses, take a look at the directions for students and then take a look at the rubric. You know, if, you can, if you can line them up and make that a tight connection, um, it works really well for, uh, for the students. So uh, that's sort of my spiel on design. Any thoughts, ideas, questions? Yes, Martha. Just a thought. One other way that we made um, uh, discussions relevant was that in a writing class that I taught, the discussion questions were actually kind of like a, almost designed so that they were a pre-write for the assigned essay. So that you got your kids prepped and ready and thinking about the essays they were, the essays they were supposed to read and then the essay they were supposed to write. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Cool. So uh, just a few things about you know, moderating a discussion. So uh, over the years, we've learned some, some uh, best practices. This actually comes from the handout that you, uh, that you guys have uh, in front of you. Um, one thing you don't want to do is get in there and, uh, and answer the questions, because okay? as soon as the authority comes in, uh, the students feel like there's not much left to say. Um, the, and there's this. The, 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 there's a flip side to it, where if you start responding to one or two students, uh, the other students say, "Oh, you like him, or you like her. She, he's he or she is the teacher's pet." So you do kind of want to spread out your responses and and at least be aware uh, that you don't want to get tangled up with one single student in a in a discussion thread. So. Um, so uh, just some best practices. I don't want to read off the, off the slide, but uh, what you do want to do is be aware of the fact, again, that for many students, this is brand new. So they're not going to initially place a value on the discussion forums. But what we have been promoting over the years is that a discussion forum can serve as a, a replacement for writing papers. Because uh, you know, when you consider that in some disciplines uh, we serve uh, more adult students, again, 24 and older, than uh, uh, than we do uh, the 18 to 22 crowd. Um, and when you think about your discipline, how uh, how many reports and/or papers that are people uh, actually going to be required to write? Sometimes uh, a lot more relevance can be found in collaboration. Collaboration is really the professional behavior that we keep hearing about is needed uh, in the workplace. How well will someone collaborate with someone else in the professional realm? Well, discussions come a lot closer to, especially if we evaluate that collaboration, come a lot closer to being authentic than uh, tests or papers. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about rubrics, because this is about evaluating and monitoring so uh, here are some benefits uh, for rubrics. I'm sure many in the, in the room are aware of what a rubric is. It's, it's essentially a set of criteria and achievement levels uh, for any kind of activity in a course. And um, you know, here are some uh, you know, great benefits to, uh, to the rubric, uh, to using a rubric. Um, so I just want to give you a little tour of how we create these things in Blackboard. So uh, in Blackboard, there is, uh, in the Tools section, there is a, a, a rubrics uh, a tool. And when we click on that, we get a screen that brings up the rubrics that have already been created in a course. Um, a lot of times, uh, these are names of some of the, uh, some of the discussions and uh, different assignments. Rubrics can be used in Blackboard for both assignments and uh, for discussions. So I highly recommend you use them. They clarify the criteria for sure. When we do uh, create a new rubric, this is what it looks like. On the left, we have the criteria. On the right, we have levels of achievement. There are all kinds of uh, features in terms of nesting these, changing the percentages, uh, changing how many criteria there are. 
Uh, one recommendation I would use is keep it simple. You can, you can sort of box yourself into a very complicated uh, grading schema uh, that won't help you out as the instructor. And uh, I filled one out uh, just with three sets of criteria. Uh, again, you could see that this accommodates like a fairly good amount of text. I like to take this directly from the directions to students and, uh, and put, in, put in the criteria across there. So um, when we are grading a discussion, so here's a discussion, uh, it's called Drill Baby Drill, um, and it's for uh, the instructional designer uh, uh, course that I talked about. And uh, basically it's about drilling, drilling with faculty into what they actually want to do in their class. And so anyway, uh, it's as simple in Blackboard as uh, going to the discussion, clicking on the discussions link, and then on any given discussion, clicking one of these down arrows and clicking grade. I took out the names to protect the, uh, the innocent. Um, but when you do click grade, this is what you see. Uh, how many, uh, right off the bat, you see uh, how many submissions. You could see the power players in a discussion right away. Um, and next to each student, what's kind of nice about discussions in Blackboard, each, each student, there's a grade button. And when you click it, again, I erase the names to protect the innocent. Um, you know, one thing that everyone should know, uh, every time uh, something is posted, the date is posted with it. So if someone participates late, you'll know right away. Um, but what's cool is that the, the uh, rubric appears right, right just to the right. This is a student's name. And so, and this is actually a whole, uh, this, these are all of uh, the submissions from this single student to this discussion. So I get to scroll up and down and read every single submission of uh, Miss Blank. Um, and so right away, I can just use, look at my rubric, see how well she performed, click the rubric. The points are automatically populated and aggregated and added up and all that, and uh, the grade comes out. And so it's pretty clear, um, pretty clear feedback. Uh, yeah, Tom. Um, so let's say you're going to grade Ms. Blank here, right? Mm -hmm. You've got eight responses. Yeah. So now the scenario is where you have a student, first response, spot on, all the elements that you're looking for. Yeah. Second response is, I agree. Yeah. Right, a really low level, last minute, 11th hour, just to get my second and third posted. Yeah. Back in Angel, you could have found a higher grade for that first discussion. Yeah, for that first for response, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and thinking about it as you were saying it, you know, maybe what I'd do is I'd create a line in, in my rubric, in my rubric for the initial response. So maybe I could separate out the grading for that response. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But how do you dig into the point? Yeah, there's, uh, I should say down here too, there's a place for narrative feedback that didn't make it onto the slide. Uh, so yeah, you can provide narrative feedback as well. So um, this, one, this one has the, uh, the show descriptions, everything expanded. This one has, uh, actually it's all uh, compressed. And you know, I don't know if any of you, you are uh, familiar with working with a rubric, but r really after the first two or three students, you kind of have the rubric in your head, and it goes really fast. So you're not reading criteria over and over and over again. Uh, so I think I already, uh, yeah, constructive feedback. Um, I liked in, in the discussions, and I, I mentioned that I teach French. Uh, we have a lot of cultural discussions. Um, I encourage social uh, back and forth. There is no negative consequence to I agree. There's just no points generated from I agree. Um, so, uh, and you know, I, I guess it's a no-brainer. You know, provide constructive free feedback. Yes, very important. Um, and as I'm, I've been mentioning all along, uh, 
uh, extra efforts are necessary to get students to tune into the discussion forums. But I'll say, you know, there are a lot of faculty across the state that have now placed uh, discussions at 40, 50, sometimes 60 percent of a student's grade, depending on the discipline. And essentially what they're requiring of their students is to write the five-page paper or the ten-page paper three paragraphs at a time. And, you know, one thing I always found a little faulty, uh, I was an English teacher as well, I always found faulty is when I grade a five-page paper, especially at the end of a semester, at the end of, end of a quarter, and I hand it back to the student, I don't know what the student's going to do with any of my feedback. So um, if I got to grade it a few paragraphs at a time, maybe I could be more helpful to the, to the student than uh, grading, uh, doing a summative grade of uh, you know, an entire project. Look at that little tiny question mark. I couldn't, I couldn't edit that at all. <laughs> so your questions, big and small. Any questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, I have. I, I haven't explored the grading of a wiki. And uh, you're talking about the wikis in Blackboard. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I have other, I have other people that I pull in, but yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I, uh, I haven't used that yet. I'm asking because when I talk to, I work more with the 18 to 22 year olds. Uh-huh. And discussion boards are, so, they're like, I don't get this. It's not how they naturally behave, but they're really familiar with wikis. With wikis. And yeah, I'm no, that, that makes sense. I'm going to look into I'm going to look into that because you can create a wiki in Blackboard, yeah. and if you can apply a rubric to the wiki, then you know all the tools and stuff that I've been talking about would apply. Yeah, Maureen. Oh, okay. Yeah, Brandon. Mm -hmm. The blog. Maybe we'll work it into the course there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I created uh, a lots of different rubrics up here. There, I, I researched some discussion rubrics uh, inside of SLN, Open SUNY, and outside. And I included this presentation as well as everything else um, in this Google folder. And that is available on my next slide. <laughs> Two minutes. All right. Are there any questions before we break? I am going to put a link up here, so I'll uh, I'll get it. I'll get a uh, you know a Bitly uh, up there in a second. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks.